Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Intel's ninth generation of their Core Series consumer CPUs launches October 19th, led by the flagship i9 9900K. Eight cores, 16 threads, 5 gigahertz turbo out of the box. This thing is indeed a beast. Now there are two other CPUs launching as well, the i7-9700K and the i5-9600K, but really this is all about the flagship, the first consumer i9 CPU that Intel has launched. It is Coffee Lake Refresh. It is an update of the eighth generations, and yes, it will work in the eighth generation 300 series board. So if you have a Z370, yes, it will work, Yes, you will need a BIOS update, but unless you have a super cheap end board with poor power delivery, you really should not have a problem running this in the Z370 series boards. There are Z390 boards launching. We're gonna talk about that briefly, but those are a refresh as well. So don't feel like you have to run out and buy one if you already have a Z370. But that's a topic for another video. Right now, we're going to talk about what's new, what's not new, the price, how it compares to Ryzen, and whether or not you should order one of these beasts. Pre-orders are open now for all the new processors and the new Z390 boards. Linked in the description below are links to Amazon and Newegg for both the chips and the boards. If you're interested in ordering one to make sure you get one on or about launch day, those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. If you shop there, please use those. I would greatly appreciate it. Two things I would like to be very clear about before we get into the nitty gritty details in this video. Number one. I have not benchmarked this yet, and I cannot show you benchmarks in this video because the embargo for benchmarks lifts October 19. There will be a follow-up video with the benchmarks in that video. Number two, I don't have to benchmark it to tell you this. This is the fastest gaming CPU that you can buy today. It is superior in every respect to its predecessor, the i7-8700K. This has more cores, faster clock speed, more level three cache, there's nothing about this CPU that is inferior to the previous generation in any way, except maybe price. And price-wise at the moment, it's currently about $120, $130 more expensive than the current market price of the 8700K. With all those extra features, if you're going to buy one today, I think it's worth the money. We'll talk about value equations and differences more, but I do wanna be clear. If you're building a beast of a computer, if you have a $2,000 plus budget, 2,500 or more, if you want a computer that's gonna last you for many years, maybe this generation's i7-2600K that's gonna have five plus years of awesome performance, this may well be it. Now, I don't know about overclocking yet. I don't know about whether or not it's uh, going to run over five gigahertz. We'll have to do that in a later video. But if you're looking for the best, you found it. The i9 is the flagship of the CPUs being launched on October 19, but there are two more chips we're talking about. The i7-9700K, eight cores, eight threads. That's a bit of an interesting chip because it has more cores than the previous chip, which was a six core chip, but it has fewer threads. The 8700K it replaces has 12 threads, but only six cores. In programs that really need eight cores, it may be faster. But in programs that want 12 threads, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 looking at you, it may be smoother on the older 8700K. It's kind of a compromise. It gained in some areas and lost in others. It definitely gained in clock speed and potential overclocking because all three of the new chips are soldered. Now putting the new i7 aside, the new i5-9600K is essentially the i5-8600K with a clock speed boost because it's still six cores and six threads just like the eighth generation chip was. I recently did a build on my channel with the i3-8350K. There is no new i3 launching with this generation now, but there should be more chips launching at the end of the year or perhaps early next year at CES in January, as well as non-overclock chips and whatnot. But the i5-9600K might be worth considering if you were looking at the i3-8350K for casual gaming, esports, if you want 144 frames per second, but you're not playing AAA games, have no interest in playing AAA games, if Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is not of interest to you, but Rainbow Six Siege or CSGO is, if you want to save some money, then maybe the i5-9600K is a good replacement for that old i3. 
Inevitably, in any conversation of a new processor like this, the very first question gets asked is, should I upgrade or how does it compare to that other company that makes chips? In this case, AMD and the Ryzen 7 2700X. Now, a detailed performance comparison will have to wait until after the 19th, but let me offer you this thought. The all-in cost, if you're either building an entire system or you have to replace your whole platform, motherboard, CPU, and cooler, the all-in cost for the i9-9900K is roughly $850. That's a $200 motherboard. That's a premium quality board. That is a premium cooler, such as a 280 millimeter liquid cooler, a bit less for a D15 or a Darkrock Pro 4, but if you want a 280 millimeter, you're gonna be about 120. And then the cost of this, so $850. The Ryzen 7 2700X, which is also eight core, 16 threads, is $500 motherboard cooler and chip because it includes a reasonably good stock cooler. The Wraith Prism is very nice. And if you're gonna buy a $300 CPU, buy a $200 motherboard. It's the features as well as power delivery. It's the quality of the sound chip, the LAN chip, the number of M.2 slots and all the various other expansion items. So comparing like for like $200 board to $200 board, this is $350 more. However, it's about a gigahertz faster out of the box, four gigahertz versus five gigahertz roughly. More overclocking potential. Intel chips are known to overclock pretty well. And now that these are soldered, is 5.5 gigahertz possible? I don't know. We're gonna find out after the 19th. But if you wanna play games at 144 to 200 frames per second, I can tell you from experience, the i7-8700K at five gigahertz does it noticeably better than any of the Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5 chips do. Now, if you play games at 60 uh, frames per second or 100 frames per second, this really doesn't matter. But if you want high frame rates, it really does. It is also worth noting that a whole computer is not just a motherboard chip and cooler. It's easy to look at those two prices, 500 for Ryzen 7, 850 for the i9 and say, man, that's a lot more expensive. Is it? In a premium system with a premium video card, either the new RTX or perhaps a GTX 1080 Ti, a case, power supply, everything else, if you have a $2,000 budget for a system, $2,000 for a Ryzen 7 2700X premium build versus $2,300 for an i9-9900K is about 17% more money for about 20% more clock speed and anywhere between 20 to 40% more performance, estimated, Just haven't taken it out of the box yet, but you are getting value for the money. Now, if you're looking at a 1,000 to $1,500 build, i9 is not even part of the conversation. It doesn't fit within the budget. But if you're building a premium system, build a premium system. Um, as you approach 2,000 or go beyond, I really think this is worth the money, and that's before I've tested it. The next question is, should you upgrade? Now, not having benchmarked this yet, although knowing that it's essentially a Coffee Lake refresh, I have an idea of what to expect. Let me offer you this thought. If you play modern AAA games with a modern GPU from the 10 series or the new 20 series, if you wanna play Call of Duty Black Ops 4, if you wanna play Black Battlefield 5, uh, Far Cry 5, or any of the new upcoming AAA games, and you have a fourth generation i7 or older, still based on the older DDR3 platform, it's time to upgrade. Those are great chips and easily ran at four to four and a half gigahertz, sometimes faster, but clock speed isn't everything. The missing instructions from the fourth gen and older, the slower RAM, the slower DMI bus speeds, the older architecture, even at faster clock speed is showing its age. Now I have an i7-2600K at 4.5 gigahertz. I have an i7-4790K at 4.5 gigahertz. I will compare them in future videos to this, not to worry. But my first hot take on this is that if you're on fourth gen or older but have a modern graphics card and are playing modern games, it's time to move. Sixth and seventh gen, I'm more on the fence about because while they're four core eight threads and this is eight core 16 threads, you could probably get another year or two out of those. There were some important instruction updates and there's DDR4 RAM and faster bus speeds that came with the one and 200 series chipsets that does make them better modern performers than the 80 and 90 series chipsets of the fourth gen. It depends. How much on the leading edge do you wanna be? How much spare money do you have to spend? Do you wanna make the big upgrade now or wait a year and see if maybe they make some refreshes and updates to this? 
that's hard to say, but I'm on the fence with the sixth and seventh gen. If you have an eighth gen, if you have an i7 8700K, you can stop right now, keep that. There is not going to be enough of an improvement going from six cores, 12 threads, to eight cores, 16 threads, to justify taking a chip that may be six months old and replacing it. Single generation upgrades are rarely worth it. Usually you need several years. And this is why fourth gen and older, you're five generations old. If you're a premium gamer, if you're somebody who plays the latest stuff, it's, it's time to upgrade. Two years old? One year old? Nah, maybe not. Now, when talking about upgrades, I'm currently talking about older i7s versus the new i9. What I'm not talking about is what if you have an older i3 or i5, or what if you have an older AMD FX-based chip or the older Phenom chip. Those are a separate conversation I'm not going to address here, but in general, if you're going from an older i3 or i5 and you're trying to play games like Battlefield 5 or Call of Duty Black Ops 4, oh yes, you're badly in need of an upgrade. The older 4-core, four 4-thread four i5s are not going to cut it for AAA games moving forward beyond this point. This is a great, great time to upgrade. The AMD FX series chips, the FX8300, it wasn't bad for its day. It was a decent budget chip if you got it at the right price. But even though it's advertised as eight cores, it's really a four core, eight thread chip, but they call it an eight core chip. Windows sees it as a four core chip. Those on from an instruction uh, per clock cycle point of view, even overclocked, are dreadful today. If you want to play AAA games, it's time to go. All I'll say is that I'm very excited about this new chip. I'm excited about 8 core, 16 threads, 5 gigahertz, soldered uh, integrated heat spreader. That makes a huge difference to temperatures and overclocking potential. And uh, we'll be testing this and benchmarking it. And I'll have my first video up October 19th. In short, we live in interesting times. The past two years has seen wonderful developments in the CPU world back and forth from AMD and Intel. And ultimately, you, the consumer, are the winner. Whatever you buy, you're getting far more for your money today than you would have two years ago. We've moved off the four core mentality. Eight cores is going mainstream. Yes, this is the, this is the first one, but don't be shocked if eight core 16 threads becomes normal over the course of the next couple of years. Buy this now and you get an early lead on all of that. Because with both companies now offering eight core chips, expect to start to see more and more AAA games really take use of it. And in terms of a premium experience, it is the way to go. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below and please hit the bell notification icon down below in order to be notified when future videos come out. Please leave your comments, thoughts, feedback, and suggestions down in the comment section below and please check the links in the video description. Links to Amazon and Newegg for all the new chips, and for the new motherboards will be down in the description below. As I said before, those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. If you found this helpful, useful, informative, entertaining, please use those when shopping. It really does make a difference. And you will also find link down below the link to my Twitter, my Twitch, and to the Tech Deals Community Discord. We have a great active community of about 3,000 members. Come hang out. We have a tech help section, a deal section, a general tech talk section, an ask tech section. Please come and join us and hang out and say hello. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time.